Welcome to Trinity Lutheran Church on this February morning worship service. Today, if you take a look at the front part of your bulletin, it'll say, The Presentation of Jesus. We're celebrating that fact that 40 days after Jesus was born, his parents, Mary and Joseph, brought Jesus to, to the temple in Jerusalem to fulfill the requirements of the Old Testament. Jesus always does that. That's his point about coming to earth, to fulfill every requirement that we can to earn us heaven. Well, what you'll also notice today is that uh, in the readings, Jesus also had a family. We know what family's like, it's important to us. And today in our sermon, we're gonna be learning that wonderful truth that Jesus became like us to save us. So that makes Jesus our brother, our big brother, our big brother who helps us in time of need. And what a blessing to know that because I have a lot of needs, I don't know about you. But we can praise the Lord that Jesus is with us, he's for us, and he helps us on earth and in eternity. It's well good for us to be here to praise him for that. We'll follow the order of service that was handed to you. Today we're offering Holy Communion, and at the proper time we invite our members to come forward to receive the Lord's body and blood. What a privilege to share that again, and if you're a visitor, please speak with the elder on duty. With that information, let's praise the Lord as we sing the opening hymn, hymn number 77. We're glad you're here, and may God bless your worship. you to stand. We worship in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father 
asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins. And trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given his only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord. Almighty and ever-living God, grant that like Simeon and Anna of old, we may see with the eyes of faith him who is the glory of Israel and the light for all nations, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, whom with you and the Holy Spirit we adore now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Our first lesson comes from the book of 1 Samuel. 
When the man Elkanah went up with his, all his family to offer the annual sacrifice to the Lord and to fulfill his vow, Hannah did not go. She said to her husband, After the boy is weaned, I will take him and present him before the Lord, and he will live there always. Do what seems best to you, Elkanah, her husband told her. Stay here until you have weaned him. Only may the Lord make good his word. So the woman stayed at home and nursed her son until she had weaned him. After he was weaned, she took the boy with her, young as he was, along with a three-year-old bull, an ephah of flour, and a skin of wine, and brought him to the house of the Lord at Shiloh. When they had slaughtered the bull, they brought the boy to Eli, and she said to him, as surely as you live, my Lord, I am the woman who stood here beside you praying to the Lord. I prayed for this child, and the Lord has granted me what I asked of him. So now I give him to the Lord. For his whole life he will be given over to the Lord. And he worshipped the Lord there. This is the word of the Lord. We join to sing the psalm of the day, as found on top of the next page, the cantor will sing stanzas one and three. We will sing two and four. Our second lesson from Hebrews chapter 2. In bringing many sons to glory, it was fitting that God, for whom and through whom everything exists, 
should be made the author of their salvation perfect through suffering. Both the one who makes men holy and those who are made holy are of the same family. So Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers. He says, I will declare your name to my brothers. In the presence of the congregation, I will sing your praises. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, he says, here am I and the children God has given me. Since the children have flesh and blood, he too shared in their humanity so that by his death he might destroy him who holds the power of death, that is the devil, and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by their fear of death. For surely it is not angels he helps, but Abraham's descendants. For this reason he had to be made like his brothers in every way, in order that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in service to God, and that he might make atonement for the sins of the people. Because he himself suffered when he was tempted, he is able to help those who are being tempted. The word of the Lord. Please stand to sing the verse of the day. Gospel according to Luke chapter 2. When the time of their purification according to the law of Moses had been completed, Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Christ. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. When the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all people, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. The child's father and mother marveled at what was said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, this child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be spoken against so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was very old. She had lived with her husband seven years after her marriage and then was a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple, but worshiped night and day, fasting and praying. Coming up to them at that very moment, she gave thanks to God 
and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. When Joseph and Mary had done everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee to their own town of Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong. He was filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. The word of the Lord. We join to confess our common faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated for our hymn of the day. Again, please note that the cantors will sing stanzas one and three, the congregation two and four.
God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, my dear Christian brothers and sisters in the faith. When I was growing up, since I'm the oldest in my family, I only have one sister, Chris, two years younger than me, I always wondered what it would be like to have a big brother. You know, someone who could give me wise, practical advice while growing up to help me, guide me, and to give me a break. Wouldn't it just been incredible while growing up to have someone like a big brother to stick up for me? You know, someone who would be standing right in back of me, looking out for me, making sure I was safe, especially when I found myself in a jam. Is that the way it works? Let me take a poll this morning. How many of you had an older brother or sister? Raise your hand. Wow, okay, a little more than I thought. Okay, so think back to your older brother and sister. Did they always give you advice that you appreciated? Did they always stick up for you at just the right time? I see. Well, no matter if you come from a big family or if you're an only child, as Christians, you and I are blessed. We're blessed to be part of an even bigger family, a better family, God's family. God tells us that he is the one who chose us by his grace, totally undeserved to be part of his heavenly family through the saving waters of holy baptism. So that means that God truly is our Father in heaven. And we're going to be addressing him that way a little later in the service. And if God is our heavenly Father, that makes Jesus God's only Son, our brother, our big brother. And unlike the siblings that you had, who may have stuffed M&Ms up your nose when mom and dad weren't looking, or advised you to go outside this morning and stick your tongue on an iron pole and see what happens. Jesus never will. Jesus will never take advantage of us, and he'll always be there for us right when we need him. That means with Jesus by our side as our big brother who's with us always to the very end of the age, you and I can go through life having peace in our hearts knowing Jesus, you're looking out for us. Knowing Jesus, we need to hear what you have to say in your word. Why? Because through the words of Hebrews chapter 2, we're going to be learning that beautiful truth today that Jesus reveals himself as our big brother. He's our big brother for two reasons. First of all, he's our big brother because he's rescued us from the fear of death. And secondly, he helps us in our suffering. When you were growing up, did you ever want to trade in your brother or sister for somebody else? I am so glad that my sister Chris is not here to answer that question about me. I mean, wouldn't it be great to trade up for someone who wouldn't sit on you and tickle you until you almost threw up? Wouldn't it have been great to have an older brother or sister who wouldn't bring a detailed report to mom and dad every time you broke the family rules? Well, we can pick our friends, but we sure can't pick our relatives. And just like we didn't pick our siblings, we didn't pick Jesus either. Jesus chose you, and he chose me to be part of his family. And you know what's even more amazing? Jesus chose to enter our world and become like us to save us. That's exactly what the Bible tells us in the words of our reading in Hebrews chapter 2. It says, since the children have flesh and blood, he too shared in their humanity, so that by his death he might destroy him who holds the power of death, that is the devil, and free those who all their lives were held slavery by their fear of death. Okay, in Bic or catechism class, we all learn the truth that each one of us is a descendant of Adam and Eve. And if we're a descendant of Adam and Eve, that means you and I are related to each other. All of us are related. No, 
maybe not by human blood, but by Jesus' blood. We know that we're related and we have more in common than what we think. Each one of us here has a human head and a brain, a heart, even though we may not always use it the way we should. Each of us has 23 chromosomes. Each of us has red blood coursing through our veins, blood that can be donated to someone else who has the same blood type, regardless of race and regardless of age. Oh, there's one more thing in common that we have, only it's something we obviously don't want. Because the Bible teaches us that not only is the human body fearfully and wonderfully made, it's amazing how it can heal and what it can do. The Bible also teaches us that the human body is a dying body. That's why God warned Adam and Eve back in the Garden of Eden when they rebelled against God, bringing sin and death not only into their lives, but to all of their descendants too. This is what God told them, from dust you are, and to dust you will return. So from one generation to the next, there's this universal fear of death. You know, death is one of those serious topics that we sure don't like to discuss during happy hour, and I bet you're not going to discuss it much later on at your Super Bowl party. No, death is one of those things we don't like to even think about. Did you know that there are many people that have such a fear of death, they won't even go to a funeral or even a visitation because they don't like to think about it? But apply that to you and me. Oh, you and I might say, oh, pastor, no big deal. Oh, but it is. I'll admit it's a bigger deal to me, too, the older my parents get. And every time I get a phone call and hear that someone else has died, it hits home so close to me, and it does you, too. But think about all the money, energy, and time that we invest to try to make our bodies look 20 years younger. Think about it. All of the time, we fill our movies and magazines with young people so we don't even have to think about getting older and dying. How bad is it? Well, our sermon reading hits us between the eyes when it says, we are held in slavery to the fear of death. Now, even if you claim that you're not afraid of dying, you and I sure don't want to experience the pain and suffering that often goes along with it. Don't try to face death alone. Quite honestly, you can't. It's too big an enemy. None of us can. But face it with your big brother, Jesus. Because only Jesus, our big brother, can set us free from the fear of death. Now you know the real reason why Jesus came to earth, why he wrapped himself in human flesh, why Mary and Joseph had to present him at the temple that day, following all those Old Testament rules and regulations. Jesus became human to save us, and he became like us to rescue us. He rescued us literally by suffering for us. That's what the Bible says in our reading. It says, God made the author of our salvation perfect through suffering. Now, the Bible word for author here can be translated founder. For example, Trinity Lutheran Church, our congregation, was founded back in 1887 by a group of men and women who simply called Pastor Brockman to be their pastor over 125 years ago. They wanted him to share the gospel with them because they knew they couldn't go through life alone. They needed Jesus, their big brother, to be with them, to rescue them from the fear of death. But even though they founded our church right here on this plot of land, those founders had no idea how many hundreds and thousands, how you and I would call Trinity our church home and be in this worship service even here today. But think about it that for a minute. What if they would have picked someplace else? What if it even wouldn't have been Waukesha where they found this church? Would you and I even be here? Would you and I even know who Jesus was? In a much bigger, even better way, Jesus is the one who has founded our salvation. 
And the foundation that he started wasn't even as key as founding a sports team, a city, or a church. Oh no, the Bible says, Jesus founded our salvation through his sufferings and death on the cross for you and for me. Out of love for us, that's the kind of big brother that we have. Listen to what the Bible says. It says Jesus had to be made like his brothers in every way in order that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in service to God and that he might make atonement for the sins of the people. We get an Old Testament history lesson right here. Just think about all of the countless animals that were brought to the temple to be sacrificed and slaughtered by Old Testament faithful Jews, bringing them to, faithful, to, the, to those faithful Old Testament priests. Just think about how many of those animals were gutted, how their blood flowed all over the altar. That's why the altar is so big, to remind us of that fact. But all those animal sacrifices were only a preview of the slaughter and the sacrifice of our big brother Jesus. He became human so that he could die. He could die in your place and in mine. You know, many men have fought and died for causes they believed in. But no one could remove the curse of sin. Only Jesus and his perfect blood could do that. The Bible says that Jesus was made perfect in every way as God's Son, yet was without sin. And yet he became like us to save us, and he offered his perfect life and his perfect blood on the cross for us. That's how our, what our foundation is based on. And no one can shake that foundation because Jesus has paid for our sins once for all. Think about it. Jesus as our big brother stuck up for us on the cross and was stuck to the cross so that when it comes our turn to die, the devil won't bully us in hell forever. Now that means you and I truly don't need to be afraid to die because we know where we're going. We're going to heaven all because of Jesus. Now maybe it has something to do with brother guilt, but as I was working on my sermon this week, I finally got around to it. I called my younger sister, Chris, and I caught up with her. If you have a sibling, I suggest that you take the time to talk to them. Why? Because time can really get away from you. You know, we used to be close growing up. In fact, it was just Chris and me growing up. We were playmates. She's a worthy Monopoly adversary. We spent a lot of time together laughing, doing those things brothers and sisters would do eating at the table together, irritating mom and dad. And we also spent time because her bedroom was right next to mine. And even though she started out in her room, by the end of the night she always took the double bed on the other side of my room because she was afraid of the dark. You know, due to distance, I don't see her as often as I'd like. Funny how close you are to your siblings and how easy it is to drift apart. You know, it's been almost 2,000 years since our human brother Jesus has visibly walked here on earth. He's ruling in the perfection of heaven. Well, at times it seems like, well, you and I are struggling as we carry our crosses. How can we be so sure that our big brother Jesus is near us? How can we be so sure he's interested in us? Well, our sermon ring promises that Jesus, our big brother, helps us when we suffer. Now think about the audience of the writer of the book of Hebrews. The writer of the book of Hebrews was a Jew, and he was writing to Jews to convince them that yes, Jesus is the one they were looking forward to. Jesus is the promised Messiah. But these Old Testament Christian Jews were really taking heat for being followers of Christ. In other words, if they were being followers of Christ, their own families were treating them as traitors and pushing them outside of their family. Even to this day, it's hard for Jews to become Christians. While our own flesh and blood might not reject us if you and I become Trinity members, if you and I come to this house of worship, it's not going to take too long for you to realize that if you're a believer in Christ, you're definitely out of step with people at your school. 
in your neighborhood, at your job. Yes, and sometimes you and I may take heat for being followers of Christ. Well, even though we might find ourselves isolated from the rest of the world, we need to remember it's worth it to be part of God's family. Why? Because it means if we're part of God's family, we have a big brother Jesus who always stands up for us. Listen to what the Bible says, how Jesus helps us when we suffer and why that's true. He says both the one who makes men holy and those who are made holy are from the same family. So Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers. The Greek word that the Bible uses for ashamed here can mean disgraced. For example, if a family member of ours went to jail, I doubt when you're at a Super Bowl party later today, that name is going to be the first one that you name. Why? Because we might consider that to be a disgrace. But now let's take that thought to a higher spiritual level. Just think about all the sins, both big and small, we've committed in our lifetime. We've committed and we've disgraced the name of the holy God. What does God do with us? Does God push us out of his family? Does God say, you know, you're just not worth it. I'm going to help somebody else. Oh, no. Because of Christ, God doesn't ever reject us or push us out of his family. Because of Christ, he doesn't shun us or leave us out on the cold. When we claim Jesus as our Savior, the Bible says Jesus' blood has truly washed our record clean. And also Jesus takes our side when we suffer. He understands our human weaknesses because, remember, Jesus is not only 100% God, he's 100% human too. The Bible says just two chapters later, because he himself suffered when he was tempted, he is able to help those who are being tempted. Just think about how when Jesus walked this earth, how many temptations he endured and he was willing to endure. The temptation to have his family let him down. The temptation to be betrayed, denied, spit on, rejected by his own people, rejected by his own father on the cross. Jesus experienced every one of those temptations. The temptation to be impatient, unkind, ungrateful, lustful, and just downright mean. Don't think that Jesus, because he's the Son of God, it was easy for him. Oh no, Jesus wanted to prove that because he could withstand those temptations, the Bible says he helps us. To, he helps those who are being tempted. It says we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way just as we are yet was without sin. My friends, I don't know what temptations you're going to experience this week, but I know they're going to be many. So stop trying to take those temptations on your own. Ask Jesus to help you. He will. He withstood those temptations 2,000 years ago, and he'll help you and me withstand them too, even now. You know, I said before, Jesus is our big brother. Wouldn't it be great to have a big brother standing behind us? And we do. Just think the next time you feel taken advantage of, or you feel someone's not being fair to you. Do you really think you're all alone? You're not. You have Jesus, your big brother, who's standing right in back of you. Do you really think he doesn't want to see, he really wants to see you suffer alone? Oh no, he's right in back of you, and he's making history turn out to stand up for us, even if we can't see it at the time. I don't know what kind of big brother or big sister you have here on earth, but I do know you have the best big brother in history, who's literally out of this world. And this big brother Jesus is not creepily looking over your shoulder. He deeply cares about our problems, even if nobody else takes the time to listen to us. So talk to him. Keep close to him. Appreciate and often take the Lord's Supper where we literally get his body and blood together with the bread and wine. Don't give up. Jesus is our big brother and he's bigger and better than any enemy that we have to face here on earth. And that's the exact kind of big brother we want. 
It's the exact kind of big brother we need. Amen. Please stand. We join together to sing the response as it's printed for you on page 10. seated. But I have just a couple of announcements for you. As many of you know, in last Sunday's voters meeting, the voters were led by God to an issue, a divine call to uh, Mr. Dan Schultz of Michigan to be our next principal. And I have a receipt letter that I'd like to read this morning. Greeting, dear, greetings, dear friends in Christ. I would like to take this opportunity to acknowledge that I've received the divine call from you, Trinity Lutheran Church, I was notified by phone from your president, Mr. Ted Ortel, on Sunday, January 29th, and I received the packet of information on Wednesday, February 1st. I've looked over the information and I've also had a few conversations with some of your leaders. I look forward to learning more about the work at Trinity Lutheran and how I might fit into those plans. Receiving a call is always a humbling experience. I take great confidence in knowing that our Lord will bless both Trinity and Huron Valley Lutheran High School, regardless of the direction he leads me. As we work through this process together and search for God's guidance, I humbly ask for your prayers. Serving Christ with you, Mr. Dan Schultz. Uh, Dan right now is serving as principal at Huron Valley Lutheran High School, similar to Wisconsin Lutheran High School here in Milwaukee, but it's over in Michigan. Please keep Mr. Schultz as well as fa his family on where the Lord wants him to serve, whether to remain in Michigan or come and join us to be part of our Trinity Lutheran team. Next Sunday, February 12th, our Trinity Lutheran school kids, K pre-K through 8, will be singing at the 815 service for a Trinity Lutheran school Sunday. Please feel free to join the teachers at their open house immediately after the first service. You're invited to take a tour of our school and have some refreshments. I'm also told that we have two open houses for our community this week on Tuesday evening and Thursday evening this week. If you or if you know of somebody who's looking for Christian education for their kids, uh, please invite them. We'd love to be able to welcome them to be part of our, our uh, family here at Trinity. A special voters meeting has been scheduled for February 19th at 12 p.m. in the fellowship. All voters are asked to attend. The main topic will be calling a new fourth grade teacher for the next school year. Those are the announcements. Now please take a moment with our friendship registers. If you're a visitor, please share your contact information. And also if you're taking communion today, please note that as well. Thank you. Jesus, Jesus, light from light, Come to bring the nation's sight. Light, light, sight, sight. Jesus is the light. Nothing hidden, all is light. Jesus, 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 Jesus.
sigh, see all nations laugh and cry, laugh, cry, why, why, Jesus Christ is why, all salvation now is now. you to stand for prayer and for our communion liturgy. We pray, Lord, it has pleased you to call home to heaven two of your servants recently, Evelyn Elke, the sister of Nelda Champlin, and Robert Sandless, the father of Karen Vesatko. We thank you for all your goodness and mercy shown to them during their earthly lives, especially in having made them your children by faith in Christ the Savior. Now all their earthly troubles and sorrows are over. Comfort their family members and friends who will miss them with the assurance of a blessed reunion in heaven for all believers. Finally, we offer a prayer of intercession for Army Airman Stephen Schrader, a nephew of our Synod's President Schrader, and for Stephen's three fellow passengers who were seriously injured in a Black Hawk helicopter accident this past Tuesday. Continue to be with these soldiers as they receive ongoing medical attention. If it be your will, spare the life of Stephen, whose injuries were the most extensive of the four men, and restore him to his family. Watch over our U.S. military personnel wherever they might be serving our country, and bless their efforts on our behalf. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good and right that we should at all times and in all places Give you thanks, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who, sharing your eternal splendor, was presented on this day in your temple in the substance of our human flesh and revealed by the Spirit as the glory of Israel and the light of all peoples. Therefore, with all the saints on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their glorious song.
give thanks, Lord our God, that you brought consolation to your people and redemption for all in the person of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. As Simeon and Anna beheld him in the temple, so grant us to see him in, with, and under the bread and wine of this sacrament. Strengthen us in faith until we too with our own eyes see your salvation. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. And now the peace of the Lord be with you always.
I invite you to stand to sing the song of Simeon on page 15. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Merciful Father, we give you thanks for Joseph and Mary who kept your word and presented Jesus with thanksgiving and rejoiced in your protection of Mary during childbirth. We give you thanks for faithful Simeon and Anna who waited for that day when they would see your salvation in the face of your son whom you promised. Give us such faithful hearts that we may rejoice in your Son, watch and wait in faith upon your good and gracious will, and boldly proclaim your salvation to all people. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. We close with our hymn 78 stanzas 1 and 4. <laughs> 